Jones versus Combs part 15. Now we left out at part 60 and just as a reminder this is regarding defendants Lucian Charles Grange Ethiopia Motown Records Love Records and Universal Music Group is describing this private lawsuit. Guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm definitely going to finish this series up today. I know I haven't posted this particular series in a few days. It makes my stomach churn. It's just sickening as hell, but I promise I'm going to finish it up today, which is Sunday, March the 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So we're going to go down to um, D. By taking the concrete steps outlined above, the defendant's knowingly participated in sex trafficking and furthered the Combs sex trafficking venture. The concrete steps above constituted taking part in the sex trafficking venture and were necessary for its success. The concrete, step, the concrete steps above constituted active engagement by the defendants in Combs sex trafficking venture. Defendants knowingly and intentionally benefited from and receive value for its participation in the sex trafficking venture in which Mr. Combs with the defendant's knowledge or their reckless disregard of the fact that Combs would use means of force, threats of force, fraud, coercion, and a combination of such means to cause plaintiff Jones as well as others, some of whom were under the age of 17, to engage in commercial sex acts. Okay. Uh, the defendants knew through years of lawsuits, hush money, settlements, and notice that was provided by Miss Cassie Venture at the beginning of 2023 that Mr. Combs was engaging in sex trafficking and that the defendants was participating in a particular sex trafficking venture, i.e. the coercive Combs sex trafficking venture outlined above. Now, the defendant's knowledge went far beyond having an abstract awareness of sex trafficking in general. Indeed, defendants were present at Shallis Recording Studios and in Mr. Combs' Miami, L.A., and New York City homes while he actively engaged in freak-off parties and sex trafficking and the large amount of cash that defendants were giving him. Thus, defendants did not simply fail to adequately detect signs of Combs sex trafficking. It did detect multiple signs of Combs coercive sex trafficking venture and continued to participate in the venture. Defendants knew that the venture was ongoing, which was why Combs required vast sums of cash. Defendants' actions extend well beyond the situation of failing to train themselves and their staff about recognizing the warning signs of sex trafficking. Defendants' employees did recognize the signs of calm sex trafficking. Indeed, defendants' employees knew about calm sex trafficking venture, but defendants decided to continue facilitating the calm sex trafficking venture rather than ending its participation in the venture. Among the signs defendants was facilitating calm sex trafficking venture were those facts that came to the attention of defendants mentioned above. Among the signs of sex trafficking venture were those facts that came to the attention of defendants. were those facts that came to its attention through complaints filed by Cassie Ventura of Combs sex trafficking. Because of those complaints, defendants knew to a certainty that Mr. Combs was engaged in sex trafficking. Defendants knew the names of the many of Combs sex trafficking slash freak off participants, Young Miami, Daphne Joy, Stevie J, and Jade. Defendants helped to conceal the names of Combs victims from the public and from law enforcement and prosecuting agencies by helping to conceal the existence of the sex trafficking venture.
Among the ways in which defendants helped to conceal the venture's existence was by providing the cash necessary for the venture to avoid leaving a visible paper trail. Additionally, they employed and empowered Fahim Muhammad and defendant Gorham to pay off law enforcement and to compensate the sex workers with cash. So listen, y'all, y'all remember and those two I'm going to definitely do a more exclusive deal on. You remember Fahim Muhammad has the inside power to law enforcement so that Diddy won't get charged with things. And you know, Christina Coram is his chief of staff. Um, remember early on in the legal documentation, they compared her to Jessaline Maxwell, how she was to Jeffrey Epstein. Defendant's concealment, including failing to provide enhanced monitoring that was required for someone like Combs. Defendant's failed to implement an enhanced monitoring of Mr. Combs' sexual parties to ensure that underage girls and sex workers were not present. They failed to do this specifically to help conceal Combs' ongoing sex trafficking. Defendants knew that if it implemented the enhanced monitoring, it would have to stop providing D. Combs with the cash and needed to run his sex trafficking venture. Defendant's concealment, including failing to report Mr. Combs' suspicious sex trafficking activities to law enforcement and for failing to report their financial support and sponsorship of Mr. Combs' sex trafficking parties to the federal government for tax purposes. In addition to having actual knowledge it was participating in Combs' sex trafficking venture, defendants had constructive knowledge that it was participating in Combs' sex trafficking venture. Defendants also had constructive knowledge that plaintiff James and other underage minors were being coercively sex trafficked by Combs. It's constructive knowledge extended to the names of Combs victims because Combs and his associates knew the names of the victims. Mr. Combs had hundreds of cameras in his home in LA, New York City, and Miami. Mr. Combs required the sex workers and underage girls to sign NDAs prior entering his parties and prior to being drugged and sex trafficked at these parties. Now, you guys may not know, and again, I'm not a legal expert, just a previous paralegal, but keep in mind, an underage girl signing an NDA means nothing, okay? Because an underage person cannot enter into a legally binding contract, all right? Defendants had constructive knowledge of Combs' sex trafficking venture because of specific acts by Mr. Combs that put it on notice of a particular and ongoing sex trafficking venture. Among the specific acts were Combs' use of vast sums of cash, drugs, fake promises of career opportunities, and access to music industry executives in circumstances that should have prompted defendants employees to specifically raise questions about Combs' sex trafficking. Also among the specific acts given to rise to constructive knowledge were the facts that associated of Mr. Combs made numerous cash withdrawals from defendant's account through Mr. Combs' accountant, Robin Greenhill. The circumstances of these withdrawals gave defendants notice that Mr. Combs' sex trafficking enterprises were being funded. Among the financial benefits that the defendants received for participating in and facilitating Combs' sex trafficking venture were the affiliation and access to Mr. Combs' popularity. Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and our sponsorship of Mr. Combs' sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry. Mr. Combs and Combs' controlled, controlled entities made to defendants profited from their affiliation with Mr. Combs and their sponsorship of his sex trafficking parties. Mr. Combs and Combs Control Entities used the sponsorship fund in exchange for defendants for facilitation and participation in sex trafficking ventures, including its willingness to provide large amounts of cash in suspicious circumstances and to allow their failure to report these sponsorships on their taxes to the U.S. federal government to avoid triggering suspicion of the federal government. See y'all, all these celebrities y'all love attending them parties with them underage girls. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to the next part.